Hi guys, this video is about dual booting. You know what I think about dual booting, it's a mess. In the end, in the long run, right, users get stuck with updates from either other Linux distributions or from Windows. So there is information, but we don't support it. We don't, uh, we're not gonna help you if you get stuck. But there is something, right? We've made some tutorials and we're gonna create a few more since we have now system deboot and refine and see what goes on. But again, we don't endorse it. We say, it's not worth the trouble. Have a machine for Windows and have a machine for Linux. If that's not possible, have two hard disks, one for Windows and one for Linux, but don't install operating systems on one SSD and split it in partitions. Time will tell if I'm right or not, but most of the time people get stuck. I've got myself a Windows 11. Yeah, but this is fun, right? This is playing. This is not a real thing. I've made myself a hundred gigabyte hard disk and I'm gonna install Linux. So this is your Linux system. Ah, uh, sorry, Windows system. Let's make this a bit bigger. A bit, a bit, a bit bigger. Let's make this like that. System display and then the scale. Oh, we can't, right? Display resolution. Um, well, I don't know. It's gray, right? Whatever. Because I don't want to be here. <laughs> I want to be here with something else. But let's first have a look at the disks. That's something we can do, I hope. The device manager. Nope, not the device manager. So two things are not in here, I see. The disk management, that's the one. So basically our cheap port, right? The CD-ROM is still in there. And this is the UFI, NTFS, and something called healthy recovery partition. This one is filled up with uh, this one. 75% free, capacity 109, free space 22, which means around 30 gigabyte, right? We need 30 gigabyte to run Windows. Jesus. Okay. This doesn't look good, but I don't care because I'm not there for Windows. We saw the UFI, which was not big at all, partitioning. And then we go and download or put in our InSync. Right, let's use the one for June, right? Arco Next is something that is basically a new column Mars. And then um, I need to be able to boot, of course, from the correct one. I'll, I think I'll need to be very fast indeed because VirtualBox immediately wants to boot up with Windows. The thing, the spinner you see there is going to be Windows. Now, I do believe, let's see, I do believe, my God, that in Windows update, uh, advanced options, uh, recovery, restart now, restart now. We have the option to go to the, the BIOS or the UFI settings, in this case, the virtual box settings. I need to be able to boot up with something else, right? And it won't let me. F8 would be my quickest jump to it but probably I'm not fast enough so that's why I'm doing this okay so troubleshoot I guess advanced options UFI firmware settings that's what I want so we're there and we go to the CD-ROM and we are going to use Arconet with the new Calamars version from yesterday So 
So we tend to follow the code on Calamari's GitHub and test it out first in the Arco Next. And if it's okay, it can go to the Arco Net and the Arco Pro and Arco Plasma. So for me, the win is another test. What will it do if it sees Windows 11 there? So my approach is first Windows 11, just do the manual installation, do everything, let it take care of itself. And then it's up to Calamaris. Oh yeah, um, that's okay. I've made sure the internet was not on when installing Windows 11. Um, I don't need this one, right? I don't need the online one. What I did, we've made videos about Grub, so that's okay. There was somebody saying today, I've installed System D boot. So let's have a look what happens if we use System D boot and Windows is there. So we don't need internet, which you better say I'm living in Brussels. Voila. And then Belgium next. And here it is, right? This is the decision time. It's only 100 megabyte FAT32. SDA2 is 16 megabyte unknown. So something small in between. And then SDA3 is the NTFS thing. And then we have also an SDA4 at the end. So install along the sides would be my option. Something like that. You decide where the slider goes. So let's see, this is 50-50, right? Next, and off we go. What happens then with systemd? So I'll be back if the resizing is successful, if voila. If they're unpacking, we can relax and then we come back when the, everything is installed and we see what's gonna happen to our UEFI. Let's continue our story and see what happens to our system. No guarantees, but this is what happens. So Windows 11 is in there in the system D. And when we press E, doesn't support editing the command line. <laughs> when we press E, then we do get something. So this is basically a dual boot system now. And we have an SDA5. Let's have a look at Gparted. I do think I forgot to install something, right? Which is, again, a great opportunity to teach you something else. Control F2, Control F3, login sudo pacman minus s, xfc4. We will forget that, right? xfc4 is removed. So afterwards, you can still get everything in if you update the system. And no, right, 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 right. What did I do, remember, to for Windows, I just said, forget about internet connection. You shall have no internet. So I could create a local account rather than an online account as they are forcing us to do. <clears throat> right? So now we've got internet. So like I said, we will forget an Arco Net and Arco Pro. Everything is away, right? XFC4, XFC4 goodies are gone. And we need to decide later on what extra we want. But this works too, because we know our Lego blocks, right? We know what to type. We know what to install, and there's Mate, there's Plasma. Go type the desktop you like. Right, update Derek. You're yeah, sure. And then we go for this bunch of things. 66 packages, and you've got yourself a desktop. One of us proven himself over the years. XFC is super stable. Uh, 
and yes it's not our design but that's maybe okay right you go ahead and change things go in there with the file manager appearance here we are and choose this one and then later on maybe that one and have fun rising now what i'd like to know as well so yeah maybe we should try if windows is not broken but first let's go for g parted g parted g parted where would that be where do they put these things g parted let's see if we can launch it like this if it is installed it is installed okay so this is our setup let's analyze a little bit sda1 efi system partition fat 32 boot efi there's a microsoft reserve partition of 16 megabytes then there is the ntfs thing then we'll have x4 and then again an ntfs thing so what's inside boot efi let's have a look if we go to file system here that's what interests us but there is a safety right and the safety is you need to be root i can't go to root because of the fact that this is not a fully installed system then i do sudo pacman minus s arco xfce um no arco net xfce that's the correct name okay and then we do a scale sure and then we log out I better restart xfc go back in and it remembers my previous session which i don't like but it's the default and uh, i was going to right i was going to go through through norm to file system a right mouse click now we have everything and an open folder is root and we go inside boot efi this is all normal in here we have this one that one there you are my friend boot oh la la la, la. what's all that right policies mem test is here PCDs are here on all languages and here's a recovery so basically that's the one doing its job empty boot Arclix system D okay so this is the new kit on the block now what will happen let's first go to windows what would happen if we go for our scripts we have the to grub to boot and to refine what will happen to the system is my question now maybe you're watching this video and think oh anything is possible yes at this point in time it's okay but it might not be okay with the updates that are coming from linux and from windows okay so there's no guarantee that it stays working keeps working okay so um let's take another kernel to boot from to see that it works and then since we're now on system deboot what happens if we go and use our script to grub disclaimer big fat disclaimer this is going to go wrong and it's not our doing and we're not responsible and you clean install it again
Let's see what happens. Mm -hmm. You found Windows Manager. Let's boot Windows first. Okay, check. Right, we can restart again. Sure. And this is our clicks. Another what if came up. What if I remove the kernels? Right? First of all, I need to know the kernels. So it's Arch or Zen. Choose. Okay, let's remove the Zen kernel. All kernels but the Linux kernel. Sorry, that one. So Zen out and keep Linux. Will that have an impact on our system? And I see it did not get rid of the Broadcom and the Realtek. So that's another remove. Remove Broadcom and Realtek. Then these builds are faster. On virtual machine, you can just do this, right? On real metal, you have to see if you need it. So if we do this again, well, not that, but if we do this again, let's count one, two, that's it. <laughs> wow, <laughs> I was quick. One, two. Anything changed? Yes, because in here is no longer the LTS or the Zen or the, in this choice, we have only Linux and this guy. Let's first test this. And all is well in virtual machine, but maybe, right? Your real metal is completely different and there are no guarantees. None. Now I'd like to go to refind. As long as you get this, you're good, right? So restart. And only this one has our script. Script that says, move me from bootloader to refined to refined. Again, big disclaimer, things will go wrong and it's not our fault. Let's sudo reboot again. Then we see this. This is the USB that's still in there. This is us and this is Windows. Can we boot to Windows? Seems we can. We have the, how do you call it again? The little sign there, the spinner. Now back to Linux. And you see this, this video and maybe you think, oh, that's easy. I guarantee you it's not gonna stay working in time. There will be issues over time. But if that's your only possibility, I get it. And sure. I think I've done all my what ifs that I wanted to do. And we have another video showing you some information about Google booting. And I'll add this video on this article to the articlex.com website. And I'll do that. All right. Cheers.